Hi everyone, welcome to Channel Logics. Hope all you guys are preparing well and staying safe at your home. Since we have started our online classes in this one year span of time, we have trained several thousands of students preparing for various competitive exams. If you want to meet our expert faculty team, you can meet our expert faculty team and we are going to come across with best and unique content which will help you to crack your examinations in a smart way. We are going to teach each and every subject very clearly in detail. And we are going to come across with best and smart approaches which will help you to crack your examinations in very short span of time. Our expert faculty team is going to teach you each and every subject very clearly in detail. If you want, you can join our free foundation batch. This free foundation batch, you need not pay any money for this. And in this free foundation batch, you can meet our expert faculty team who are going to teach each and every subject very clearly in detail. If you have any doubts, you can contact us through these numbers. And we welcome you to be part of Channel Logics. Thank you. Hi everyone, welcome back to Channel Logics. Today we'll be going to discuss March 6th and 7th current affairs in this session. And we'll be going to do descriptive concepts at the end of our session will be going to practice the questions which are based on your descriptive concepts and also by considering your previous year question papers here we have designed this particular practice session is it clear so let us start our session and before going to begin our session even if you want to download free pdfs of current affairs just join through telegram channel and here is a one step solution to how to join through telegram channel and get access of free pdfs so here in the link we will be providing one description that is a link in the description just click on the link and join through telegram channel so that you can get access of daily current affair pdfs and apart from this if you want to watch telugu current affairs go through chennan logics telugu youtube channel there will be uploading telugu current affairs on daily basis and now let us begin our session with the descriptive concepts under national news and here comes to all about ministry of women and child development so what is the ministry actually it is in current affair today this is all about ministry of women and child development but about what why it is in current affair now let us discuss in detail recently ministry of women and child development launches stree mano raksha project what is the project actually here stree mano raksha project and here it is in current affair all about one stop centers and now let us discuss the main objective of this particular project called stri mano raksha so with the title itself you can come to know stri which means woman right so this is a particular project which is related for the woman and now let us discuss in detail about the objective and even about one stop centers how they will be going through help the woman through this particular project called stri shakti project and now moving to the concept here along with this ministry that is ministry of women and child development the other organization which is in collaboration is nimhans bengaluru is in collaboration and launched this stree mano raksha project which is and you can consider here the main objective and aim of this stree mano raksha project is the goal of improving women's mental health in india all about focusing on women's mental health in india and they'll be going to help to this particular project called stree mano raksha by considering one stop centers then how these one stop centers will be going to help now let us discuss so here comes the project this would concentrate on increasing the ability of one stop centers here are the officials in terms they'll be considering like all the tools and procedures who are the women visiting these one stop centers so particularly for the category of even you can consider those who have experienced violence distress and with the compassion and care they can be treated at through this one stop centers so here they'll be all focusing about this particular project called stree mano raksha project so here the main objective is for improving the women's mental health particularly in india so with the main motto women's that is ministry of women and child development along with nimhans bangalore has come up with this particular project is it clear and all they'll be going to help through the centers called one stop centers and even including these one stop centers actually even performed admirably during the covid time also as we have known that 
Even there are already 700 one-stop centers that which were operating across India. And apart from that, people who were working in these ones, so that is one-stop shops, they'll be taught how to appropriately operate the self-defense, that is the Shahid Woman Helpline and counsel them. So here, the persons or the people who will be working with these one-stop shops or one-stop centers, so they'll be trained. Is it clear? So this is all about the particular project called Stri Manoraksha Project, focusing on women mental health in India and also which is going to focus about and they'll be going to give the help by a particular centers called One Stop Centers. Is it clear with the concept? Now let us discuss the next concept which is all about the festival called Herat Festival which is celebrated in Jammu and Kashmir. Now let us discuss about this particular festival in detail. So it comes to a cultural point of India. And then moving to the concept called Herat Festival. Actually they'll be like what are the rituals they'll be going to perform. On which month or else on which of the following days according to Hindu calendar is there any other calendar they'll be following. Yes here comes to all about Herat Festival. So which means Herat or else the other name of the festival is the night of Hara. That is the night of Lord Shiva, which is generally known as Mahashivratri in most of the southern parts also. But moving to Jammu and Kashmir, they used to call this, they used to celebrate this particular festival called Mahashivratri as a Harat festival. And which is the main festival celebrated by the Kashmir Pandits across Jammu and Kashmir. You need to concentrate here. Harat is the Shivratri of Kashmir Pandits. And then, how these Kashmir Pandits they'll be going to celebrate? Actually here, Kashmir Pandits celebrate this particular festival called Harat festival by distributing, which is actually, you can concentrate here, the walnuts. Why they'll be like distributing the walnuts? It actually represents and symbolizes and it stands as a mark of respect to the Hindu deities. So with this objective here Kashmir Pandits on the Herat festival that is the night of Lord Shiva they'll be distributing this walnuts and this marks as the you can consider here respect to the Hindu deity and then according to 2020 to the Hindu calendar you need to focus here this was celebrated on 28th of February and Herat festival is celebrated on Trayodashi that is on 13th day of the dark half of the month of Falguna according to Hindu calendar between February and March. Is it clear? 14th day actually in southern part we used to celebrate like Mahasha, Mahashivratri. But here most to Jammu and Kashmir of Trayodesh in the 13th day they will be celebrating this particular festival called Harat festival. And then. Moving to the concept here actually, this festival marks the marriage anniversary of Lord Shiva and the goddess Uma called Parvati. So this is all about the significance. That means why on like this particular day this distributing the Kashmir Pandits like they will be distributing a walnuts etc. What is the main reason actually here the significance of this the night of Hara or the night of Shiva which symbolizes this is a marriage anniversary and the day of Lord Shiva and Uma or else you can call it uh, call her the goddess with the name as Parvati, right? Shiva Parvati. So the marriage of Shiva Parvati has done on this particular day according to some mythologies. So here in the, you can consider here in Jammu and Kashmir, specifically Kashmir Pandits used to celebrate this festival called Herat festival. Is it clear? And then. Next move into the concept under defense news. So here it is in current affair all about the 19th military cooperation meet of India and US. So recently this was took place in Agra that is in the state of Uttar Pradesh. And you need to focus here 2022 which marks 19th edition of India and US military cooperation. Try to concentrate here the edition. 2022 represents 19th edition of Indo and India as well as US military cooperation and particularly this cooperation meet held in Agra in the state of Uttar Pradesh and actually these discussions were co-chaired by Air Marshal B.R. Krishna, Chief of Internet Defense Staff to the Chairman Chiefs of Staff and also the Lieutenant General Stephen D. Skelka and Deputy Commander U.S. Indo-Pacific Command and as well as which were represented the U.S. side. 
So here you need to concentrate actually about the addition and then move into the concept called objective. Why actually this Indo India and US military cooperation meet has been took place. The main objective is to advance the different cooperation between the two nations by frequent strategic and operational consultations involving the headquarters and also integrated defense staff even including the US Indo-Pacific Command because just now we have done with the concept the discussions were co-chaired by these the, what are the commands and the committees or commissions right so that is the main objective here even Indo US Indo-Pacific Command is also taking part main objective is to strengthen this cooperation ties between that is defense cooperation ties between the two nations called India and US and then moving to the concept what is that so here comes to the discussion central on improving the both countries and also ongoing defense engagements even considering what are the new initiatives advancements technologies that both countries are following so they'll be going to share through this particular meetings you need to consider here what is that 19th military cooperation that is which is of recently took part in agra in the state of uttar pradesh and you need to consider here india us military cooperation group mcg military cooperation group this is actually a forum which is focusing toward the advancements of defense and innovation sector is it clear so this is actually the recent meet between india and us all about military cooperation between the two nations and then Next, if we move to the indices and the ranks and reports, so here comes to SDG index, Sustainable Development Index or Development Goals Index of 2021. So here comes to India's rank. Majorly, you need to focus from ranks and reports. So if any report was recently released, right, or its index. So the first at most question you need to expect is from India's position or India's rank in certain report or index. Here comes to Sustainable Development Goals Index. India's rank and the position stood at 128th position. And in this index here, countries are ranked by the score. So out of 100, based on the score of every particular country, they'll be giving the ranking. So here comes to India's position is 128th position. And out of 100, India scores, that is 60.07 is the score of India, right? And then, last year actually India's rank was 117, but now we stood in the position of 120th. And now let us discuss what is the objective of all this index called Sustainable Development Goal Index. As we have well known with the concept called Sustainable Development Goals, those were 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And you can consider here, which is actually developed by United Nations, right? And then moving to the concept here, each and every country has set some targets to reach all these 17 sustainable development goals, right? So every year they'll be focusing and by conducting this index, like they'll be going to, they'll be coming to know like what, how many countries are like you can consider here achieving the topmost or else whether they were reaching to attain all these 17 sustainable development goals or not so through this index we can come to know where even our country called India stands in the position India stood in the position 128th and then moving to the concept here the index particularly measures the country's total proposal progress towards achieving all these 17 sustainable development goals and moving to the concept called the top five countries which stood in the position and that is in the top five positions which is in the index called SDG index and here moves to the top five countries were first actually stood in the first position top is Finland and second position Sweden third position is Denmark fourth is Germany and fifth is Belgium and India's rank is 128th and with this out of 100 India's score is 60.07 is it clear with the concept like India's rank and score then moving to top five countries because Apart from India's rank, from ranks and reports concept, maybe there will be the question on top three countries or else like if it is some places, top three or else top five. So here we have done with the countries of top five. Is it clear? And then 
Actually, so 17 Sustainable Development Goals were adopted by United Nations in the year that is 2015, right? And which is by United Nations, one of the six principal organs, UNGA, United Nations General Assembly in the year 2015, come up with this particular concept called 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And they have set it a target as a part of 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. So this is all about 17 Sustainable Development Goals which was set up and adopted by UNGA in the year 2015. And here it is in current affair because as on yearly basis the index will and the report has been released according to 2021. In this India's position is 128th position. Is it clear? And then. Next moving to important days. So here comes to an important day called National Security Day which is observed on 4th of March. Then, moving to the concept, what is the objective? Even National Security Day is also known as Rashtri Suraksha Divas every year on 4th of March. Moving to the objective. The objective is to honor of the Indian security forces. Is it clear? All the security forces which were present in India, so to honor Indian security forces, particularly Rashtri Suraksha Divas or else National Security Day has been celebrated on March of 4th, sorry, 4th of March. And then moving to the concept here, even other objective is to show the gratitude to all the security forces. What are the all security forces including in India? So they were including even police forces. Or else. You can consider here paramilitary forces, commandos, guards, army officers and even other persons involved in security who have sacrificed their life in maintaining the peace in our nation called India. So this is the main motto even to honor them and also that is to recognize their services and sacrifices towards nation and they even they will be sacrificing their life to protect the nation. So, with this main motto, National Security Day on 4th of March, India will be celebrating every year. And then, moving to the concept, apart from this, even National Security Week will be there. So, which is actually in the year 2022, celebrated from March 4th to March 10th of 2022. Along with National Security Day, actually the week starts on the particular day called National Security Day on March 4th. And this will be going to end on March 10th. And then 4th March actually marks the day when National Security Council NSC of India came into force. And that is in the established year is 1966. So on 4th of March National Security Council was established in the year 1966. So this is the reason why on 4th March they will be celebrating National Security Day and which was established by the Ministry of Labour under the Government of India. And then moving to the historical background, just now we have done like why on 4th March and also about National Security Week. And even now parallelly we will be going to consider first started to celebrate in the year 1972. First actually National Security Day has been celebrated in the year 1972. And moving to the concept called National Security Council of India founded in the year 1998 on 19th of November. Is it clear with the concept? So this is all about National Security Day on 4th of March. And now moving to the next important day called World Obesity Day. So here comes to World Obesity Day observed on 4th of March. But first you need to know actually what does the disease call obesity. Obesity is a disease even this can lead to other diseases also in the human body when the fat in a body increases or else there is a heavy fat in the body called so it causes a disease called obesity and then this can be like can be can a human overcome through some of the exercises and other some of the yoga practices. So here according to the, actually you need to consider here the main objective why actually world obesity day will be celebrated on 4th of March so here comes to the objective is that to spread the awareness about obesity and also encourage the action towards its elimination. So elimination how it will be done through the performing the exercises and reducing the fat in the body. So which even leads to some of the, the other diseases examples like 
heart attacks or else you can consider some of like you can consider here diabetes so these are some of the other diseases which can cause through a disease called obesity is it clear first if we stop this obesity then we can overcome or else we can prevent all other diseases too so the first initial step is obesity that means the disease which is causing the other diseases so here to spread the awareness about this particular disease called obesity actually world obesity day on march 4th will be celebrated every year and moving to the concept who has come up with this initiative or else who will be organizing this particular world obesity day so here comes to world obesity federation which is actually a not for profit body and this has been done collaboration with who that is world health organization so it has official relationship that is wof world obesity federation along with who these two has come up with the initiative for celebrating world obesity day on 4th of march and the objective just now we have done to spread the awareness about this particular disease called obesity moving to the 2022 theme so here the theme is everybody needs to act so that is as a 2022 theme even the campaign which aims to improve the world's understanding prevention and treatment of obesity so with this main motto you can consider here the theme which is considered as everybody needs to act is the theme of 2022 world obesity day is it clear with the concept everyone and now let us discuss international current affairs so here comes to the concept called ministry of external affairs recently unveils a special logo which is for the 75 years of indo and netherlands or else you can call it as indo dutch diplomatic relations is it clear so recently the logo has been released because of 75 years of bond between india and dutch i'm moving to the concept about the logo features and example so let us consider first have a glance over the image here actually this is the logo recently was in unveiled by the ministry of external affairs so that is the logo between india and dutch which is marking the 75 years of friendship between these two nations and moving to the concept here sanjay verma secretary west in the ministry of external affairs and martin van den berg ambassador of the kingdom to the netherlands which is to india and these two have launched a logo on march 2nd which is to commemorate the bond between uh, between the two nations and then what does actually the features of logo so here the feature which stands for the national flowers of both the countries of dutch and as well as india and also those two, you can consider here if you have a glance over the image maybe you'll getting a clear idea actually what is the logo and on which basis so here you can consider this is actually which consists of the two flowers that is two national flowers of dutch and as well as india is it clear lotus and tulip flower right so these are the national flowers of india and netherlands moving to the symbol called here the chakra between the flowers so this chakra actually represents the friendship between the two nations so it symbolizes through the chakra and they'll be actually recently presented a logo which is for the 75 years of friendship between india and dutch or netherlands and even moving to the concept here that means based on this logo and this is special year right so this year particular 22 represents the 75 years of friendship between these two nations so throughout the year they'll be going to conduct variety of events activities and even variety sectors of cooperations like including water agriculture education innovation energy climate culture etc so these were planned and the events going to conduct throughout the year and then when you need to focus actually as we have said that asadika amrit mahotsav celebrations right 75 years of independence of india so you need to consider here along with this you can remember easily even india and netherlands also marks a friendship of 75 years that means whenever we that means india got the independence in the year 1947 even india has started the friendship with netherlands so this 2022 particularly marks the 75 years of bond and next moving to appointments concept so here comes to about jet airways recently jet airways named sanjeev kapoor as the chief executive officer in the year 2022 
Now let us discuss in detail about the person's historical background called Sanjeev Kapoor, who has been recently appointed as Chief Executive Officer of Jet Airways. The previous working areas and the experiences let us discuss now. So here, actually Sanjeev Kapoor was the president of Obrai Hotels and also worked with this particular Jet Airways as a Chief Operating Officer and even including the Chief Strategy and Com Commercial Officer at Vistara. So these are some of the historical back, some of the historical background. And moving to other in detail, even he has also worked as the Chief Secretary and Commercial Officer at Vistara Airlines, which is for three years, and which is as a Chief Operating Officer of SpiceJet as a which is for the period of two years. So based on all these considerations, Jet Airways recently considered and appointed the person called Sanjeev Kapoor. Even you can have a glance over the image of person here. Sanjeev Kapoor, who has been appointed as a Jet Airways Chief Executive Officer. Based on the previous working areas and experiences, then only the person will be appointed for certain positions. Is it clear? And then. Moving to obituaries here, former Indian Army Chief General S.F. Rodriguez recently passed away. Let us discuss the historical background and achievements and even when the person was alive, what are the areas he used to work. And now let us discuss in detail about the person. So here comes to General S.F. Rodger. So here actually the full name of the person is Sunith Francis Rodgers. Recently the person has been passed away and he was actually the former Indian Army Chief then. Moving to the concept who also served as Chief of Indian Army from the year 1992-1993 and at the age of 88 years the person has lost his life. And even you can consider here S.F. Rodgers also the Governor of Punjab from the year 2004-2010 as even an Indian Army Chief is it clear? He has also worked and also took the position and charge as a governor of Punjab from 2004 to 2010. And even he has also worked as served as a two terms on the National Security Advice Board. And then since his retirement, he has been engaged in social, literary pursuits and also delivered numerous talks on the strategic issues. So this is all about the person. S.F. Redgers, recently the person has been passed away at the age of 88 years. Is it clear? He was actually the Indian Army Chief General. Just have a glance over the image and the person like titled as a, a thinker and a strategist called S.F. Rodgers. Is it clear? So the recently the person has been in current affair because of, he has lost his life. And with this we have done with the descriptive session. Now let us discuss the practice questions which were based on till now whatever the concepts we have done based on those concepts and by considering your previous year question papers the model has been considered for you. Like what is the format we need, we need to choose. Is it clear? And now let us begin with the practice session based on the descriptive concepts. So let us look into the first question. What is the rank of India? in the sustainable development report of 2021 list right so if we move to the options 117 120 115 or 126 here i'll be giving a clue just eliminate first option 117 is the 2020 sdg index report is it clear so according to this sdg index of 2020 India's rank is 117. But now, what is the India's rank? Just now we have done with the concept. Try to mention in the comment section. And here, even you have to concentrate on the top 5 countries too. And moving to India's score, out of 100, well, India's score is 60.05 in this particular index. And this is the index which measures all the countries that is the achievements or is the progress towards the achievement which is regarding 17 sustainable development goals SDGs right so now just try to mention the answer in comment section and mention this a question number along with this option that is a letter you need to mention answer right no need to mention like the whole answer or the sentence just mention the correct option in the comment section along with the question number and now if we move to the next question which of the following country has stopped the Sustainable Development Index of 2021? 
just now as i have said that you need to focus along with the rank of india the top 5 countries which stood in this particular index or report move into the options here norway sweden finland germany actually these all countries were stood in the top 5 list but here you need to know which is the top first country which has stood the position in the first and that is in the that is in the index called sustainable development goals index of 2021 is it clear and then next national security day is observed on which of the following dates which is to the our or else to commemorate or else to honor all the security forces in india right if you move to the options march 1st march 2nd march 3rd or march 4th and along with national security day even try to concentrate on march 4th what is the other day try to mention in comment section is there any disease which is related for the any like world any of the health organizations or else any other federations or the organizations which has collaborated with who and established one of the following day as we have done in our today's session so revise that concept and even try to mention at the second question try to mention your like question number 7 you need to answer for this particular the question displaying on the board and as well as apart from this question you need to answer for what is the other day celebrated on 4th of march and then herath or the night of hara festival has been celebrated in which of the following states or union territory assam ladakh jammu and kashmir or himachal pradesh at least if you have remember this is a certain category of pandits used to celebrate a festival and they'll be considering this day herath festival as a night of lord shiva right or hara and this is a marriage anniversary of lord shiva and uma parvati so try to consider here about the particular category of pandits who will be celebrating then you can answer that is in which of the following state or union territory herath festival will be celebrated right and then moving to the concept called stree manoraksha project so the ministry of women and child development has actually come up with this particular initiative and a project which is focusing towards the women's mental health in india right and then in collaboration with one of the bangalore organization it has actually like come up with this particular project called stree mano shakti project and what is the other organization that is from bangalore organization which has cop up with ministry of women and child development is all about the question if you move to the options which are isha foundation rv trust nimhans or neptune foundation try to remember the concept and try to mention your exact answer in the comment section and then move on to the question from obituaries so what was the profession of jay prakash chaukse who has been recently passed away this is new question and along with this question after the session once you go through the concept about profession of jay prakash chaukse and the history of jay prakash chaukse and if it is possible just mention in comment section and describe about the person in one to two, two lines is it clear and here comes to all about the profession if we move to the options agriculturist sports journalist economist or film critic so here your answer is option d actually jay prakash chaukse is a film a film critic recently the person has been passed away so now we are discussing about the person in our today's current affair is it clear once after the session go through the historical background about the person called film critic that is jay prakash chaukse is it clear and try to describe about the person in one to two lines in the comment section along with this and because as now we have discussed even the answer of this particular question so here instead of this question you need to describe about the person in one to two lines just mention the question number either 5 or 6 or 7 then you need to answer about the person history is it clear then with this we have done with our session both descriptive and as well as practice session so and if you were having any of the doubts either regarding descriptive concepts or regarding practice questions feel free to mention your doubts in the next session i'll be coming to like coming up with the concepts whatever you will be raising the doubts and i'll be clarifying your doubts in the next session if you'll be mentioning thank you everyone we'll be meeting in our next session until then stay tuned stay safe and stay home